brand new, different type of broadcast because I'm I'm going to still hang with my uh, simulcast with Miss Beverly D. Are you Beverly? Yes, I'm here. Can I'm you hear? Doing... Oh, I, I oh I'm hear very you. good. And, uh, all right, I can hear you loud and clear. Yes, I can. So we got you in, and I and I know how to deal with the phone calls from Detroit that comes in. My board is lightening up uh, here. Uh, uh, boom. And let me go to the chat okay. room and make sure well, it's open. Okay. Go ahead, Well, Beth. while you're do, you doing that, Ron, I want to tell the people about uh, the seminar. Jonah Bay is coming to town, and he will be here Friday, August the 21st, okay. through August the 20th, uh, 23rd. Yep. Now, the 21st, uh, it's the ticket sold okay, out. Okay, okay, okay. Can you hear me, Ron? All the seats are gone for the VIP. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. I hear you loud and clear. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, I can. Uh, go ahead. I'm listening. All right. Okay. And so uh, uh, we will focus on the 22nd and the 23rd. Uh, that Those conference yes. days. Now, uh, on those days, on the 22nd, he's going to talk about taking control of your straw man through your birth certificate often sit often authentication. Excuse me, my, ta my tongue yep. just had. And the yep. discharge authentication. of death. Yes. And yes. then on, That's on Saturday. On, yes. And on Sunday, he's going to talk about understanding your national and state constitution and injunctions and diplomatic immunity. And um, yes. for yes. In the time, now I'm going to give people time. On Saturday, the time is from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. On Sunday, it's 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Now, the VIP session, which is already sold out, is from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. And the yes. phone number, the phone number uh, is 313-656. 7283. That's 313-656-7283. And they can go to All your right. website too, Ron. It's ronmarch.com. They can go to your website and get the tickets. No tickets will be sold at the door. All right. All right. Way to go, Beth. Way to go. Okay. Now, let's talk about this new uh, project that we're going to do here at the station. I want to let out, I don't want to call them rules, but let's, let's call them the directives. I want to explain the directives. We're only going to take one call per person, per show. One call per person, per show. I will, we run this operation, Bev. I call it a radio magazine, meaning I will select the topics. We will discuss mm -hmm. the topics, we'll open the lines, and then people will ask questions relevant to the topic. I'm not going to go off on a tangent listening to people talk about this, that. I prefer not talk about Detroit because I'll do one complete show on Detroit. And my position is we have lost this city, so there's no need of unless you have a new idea, and I will entertain any new ideas in order for us to build a brand new nation inside of Detroit. Other than that, I'm cutting you off. I'm not going to waste my time and effort and people's listening ear to us keep hashing over what they're doing downtown. They're doing this. They're doing that. You must understand their intent from the, the uh, absence of Coleman Young. Their intent was to take over the city, steal everything they can steal, take everything that they can take, change the names, ignore the people, make the people pay for all of the damages that they do. So that's what they're doing. So why are we whining like little girls and boys, babies, that uh, they're doing this and they're doing that? We didn't take advantage of our position when we had the position. Coleman was a powerful leader that made it clear where he stood. And when people ran with some integrity and backbone, you had nerve to turn them down and put in dancing in the streets. 
put in uh, the, the son of uh, a cockroach, for example, and his honey or his mama, all of that, all that trash that, they, that y'all did. Don't try to say you didn't do it. Because when we caught them cheating on the process, we went down and started demonstrating. I was down there every Wednesday at 1 o'clock. We could count the heads. Every Wednesday was 200 people, same people every week. We should have been shutting down the boulevard with people. But can you get them out? No. Now everybody's whining. I don't want to hear it. I'm not going to waste my time and effort and airtime listening to you whine about what could be done or what we should be doing or what they're doing to you. I want to make that perfectly clear. This program is going to move forward with new ideas and new initiatives so that we can build a brand new black controlled Detroit, Michigan. You got that? Did that sound good? Yeah. And also, I just want Mm -hmm. people to know that we have listeners that is listening to us across the country, and and the, the purpose of this is to so they can recognize what's going on when it comes to their city. A lot of it is already happening. What they did here, they did it in, in New York. They're doing it across the board. So if you know the yes. game plan, it's like playing football. If you know uh, the moves, you know how to use defense and offense and all of that other good stuff. Yes, 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 yes. So what we're going to do, we're going to stay with our, our game, Bev, and we're going to keep moving forward. Now, I want to add also that we have listeners in the Bahamas. We have Canadian listeners. We have listeners in the U.K. Uh, we've had calls from uh, – uh, far away, I think I, we got a call, I want to say uh, uh, Asia over there, somewhere way over there we had a call one. Couldn't understand what they were saying, but, but they were speaking English. But we get calls from all over. So we're going to open up the lines when we get ready, and we'll deal with, with questions relevant to the subject matter. Uh, okay. One final comment, one final comment. The airtime for the television that you're watching me on TV in Detroit, the airtime is 6.30 to 7.30 Detroit time, Eastern Standard Time. I will stay on an additional hour, an additional hour. We'll take a break at the bottom of the hour of uh, 7.30, and that's when we'll lose the Detroit uh, uh, Comcast. We will stay on the air, Bev, and continue our radio block. I believe I have the studio, the nothing scheduled at this time, but we'll go with what we can get at that point. So now, for you people that are in Detroit, write down this telephone number, area code 718-506-1864. Say it again, 718-506-1864. You can call that number when you go off the air and you can listen on your telephone so you won't miss any of the show now if the donations come they're trickling in i have to have more donations if the donations come to the end i will will purchase more time so you can stay on to the complete show but right now i'm looking for donations just to stay on where i am everybody says ron we need you back we need you back okay i'm back so now what we want to do, I, w- I want to set up a project. Let me run through this real quick. Man. I want to set up a project where we want all the listeners in the Detroit area and the suburbs and even out in the, in the open uh, a region of the of United States. We want you to send a dollar donation a week, a dollar a week, $4 a month. I'm not asking. Asking for it. I don't want you to tell me, Ron. I'm gonna send you something as soon as I get paid. I don't want to hear that. Cause I just saw you in the in the in the, in the air party store playing numbers, and you could have saved one of them dollars and brought it over to the station. If we can get ten thousand people to put in a dollar a week, that's ten thousand dollars. And I'm sure about, RJ would be happy as that. Go ahead. Go ahead, baby. What about the what about, what about where do the people that's listening in other uh, states where where do they send the money to? Okay, I'm getting ready to give that that uh, address. We are located in the uh, Highland Park, Michigan. 
Island Park, Michigan. The address, 160 Victor, V-I-C-T-O-R, Victor, V-I-C-T-O-R, Highland Park, Michigan, area code 48203. Now, be sure and write Ron March show on the, your, 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 if you're sending a daughter or a check, be sure and write my name on it. Send it right to the station. And if you don't, if you're going to send a dollar, you can, that's okay. You can put a dollar in the envelope right on the inside of the envelope. For envelope, envelope, uh, Ron March show. Just send it over here. We will be in a position to ask Mr. R.J. if he wants to continue get this ten thousand a week. I know he'd be happy as he want to be. If you get this ten thousand a week, can we do this? Can we do that? Can we get Ron on a little bit longer? That type of thing. But I gotta have participation. So just make a sacrifice. Make it up in your mind. Now, if you want me to stay on the air, I got to have some finance, and I'm not going to build it on myself because I want this beautiful station to stay in position. I wanted to, I want to do a, a, a open house type beer bus. I haven't talked to the boss on that. I want to do a little something, something over here, bring everybody over and get a complete tour of this beautiful place. I'm telling you, this place is out of sight. I don't know what got in RJ. It just went off, went off on the deep end. That's what he did. Went off on the deep end. So what I want you to do is make up in your mind right now, you're going to send $1 a week. And that means $4 a month. And you can say that I am supporting Ron March. And you can call over here and make a complaint. Talk to Miss Cunningham. Tell her you got a complaint. Ron didn't stay on long enough or you can't hear good. And you are a supporter of the station. We got to make that move. Now, if you got a little bit more than $1, you know you got to send it. But I'm starting out with a dollar, and I want five, ten thousand 10,000 people. That's what I want. And we can make it. We can definitely make it if we do that. So let's get busy and, and take care of business. All right. Uh, Bev, are you, you have anything to add before we take off? No, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. All righty. Now, since we're going to deal with birth certificates, we need to ask the question. Question: What is a birth? What's the purpose of a birth certificate? Back in the day, Granny. Now listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Granny wrote all the birth. Big Mama wrote all the births in the little black Bible. When someone got, married, it was in the black Bible. When someone bought some land and had the uh, of the the. Uh, uh, land description. It was in the Bible. Some of you older folks remember that. Some of you got that black Bible at home now. It's worth millions. If you have one, it's worth millions. You need to email me and let me know you got that black Bible with all the writing in the front pages. You got to. Be, you have to let me know, and we'll. I'll tell you what you can do with that. But when the when the Europeans and the powers to be realized that the that the grand, uh, big mama kept the records of her family, quote, unquote, her tribe, quote, unquote, her confederation. It was all in the black book. They came up with a scheme in 1956 at Daggum Eisenhower, came up with a scheme. He said, if told uh, big mama, if you turn that little black Bible in, we're going to give you a great big old white Bible. It's going to have white leather. It's going to have gold pages, trim pages trimmed in gold, <laughs> a red ribbon, and a great big old picture of Jesus hanging on the front page. And if all you got to do is free. Just bring in that black Bible, and we are on the way to, to the uh, by and by. Granny, not, not knowing what was going down the pike, Granny trusted that European and took that Bible in there. They had a big bonfire right in the back of the building, commerce building. Burned every one of them black Bibles. Gave Granny that big. Y'all got them white Bibles right now. Look it through your house. Ask Mama where that white Bible come from. She may not be able to tell you. It's been handed down so long since 1956. It was given to her free. Given to Granny free in 1956 when they told him, "Turn in that Bible. We'll give you a brand new one." Why did they, they do that? They, they did still it. Still giving. Go ahead. They still give they it still to give you, it free, to you free. Go to the, Yeah, when you go to the funeral home, they give it to you. 
Oh, Lord, Lord, help me, help me, help me. Well, do you have any idea why they did that, Biff? I think I said it to you once before. Granny, that Bible was the registry of deeds. There Granny is. had her own, the original black Bibles that Granny had, it was the registry of deeds. And once they burned it, they set up in the county the register of deeds. And they put all of it down and then charged you to come down to get the information. It's the damnest thing in the world. And that's how they begin to steal our land, steal our ownership of the land, because a lot of the, uh, what do they call them, the county seats, they call them back in the day, the county seats, they would burn those county seats and, and, and then tell the farmer, the black farmer, that they did not own the land and told them they had to come to court and prove that they owned it. Well, those that had it in the Black Bible could prove it. Those that did not were in big trouble. So they moved it. All of the all of the all of the entries that was in the Bible they put in the uh, register of deeds. That's where them at dag dagum of uh, young blood and that Wojciechowski. Nobody's ever voted for them two two crooks. And they've been down there all my life, all, ever since I've been in Detroit, been a young blood down there, never voted for him. But they win every year. Somebody should look into that. But the bottom line is they do away with it. Now, where did that concept come from? Well, believe it or not, the concept of the Register of Deeds came from the Queen of England. The Queen of England. In 1666, that was during the time of the Black Plague. And if you did any study, I think they told you in school they had a they had a, a Black Plague in the, in London. They didn't tell you where it came from. They didn't tell you how it started. All they said was over half the people that lived in London died of the Black Plague. Well, if you look at research, you're going to find out that the Black Plague was only filth. Think about that. They didn't wash their butt. They was eating out of uh, different troughs. They was do urinating in the street, defecating in the street. All the nasties that you can think of, they lived in it. Walked through it, cook it home, and all that stuff. And it caused an epidemic. And the epidemic was so, so great that they died. Now the queen saw an opportunity. Now listen carefully. The queen saw an opportunity to steal everybody's land, all their property, not land, all their property. Even through the birth certificate, they could steal a unborn baby because it had to be registered once the baby was delivered. So, attention, we recently discovered pulling out of affidavits. I can move away from that. Actually, according to the SESCU Sesecu Vi Act of 1666. Now the word Sesecu, Sesecu, you can pronounce it a couple of different ways. Sesecu Trust is one of the most powerful corporations that you could ever create. It's, it's more powerful than the irrevocable trust. Most people think that if they have an irrevocable trust, nobody can get in it. Well, they may not be able to use it against you, in courts, but they can get the information that you have by going in those irrevocable trusts. So they passed a, a ordinance called the Sescu Vi Act of 1666. You and they said they explained it this way: during the Black Plague, while you were on a ship, you remain lost on the high seas. And until you show proof of life, and y'all listen carefully, you only have the rights that you are given. One under the domain of the queen, you know, 1666, England, their, their uh, slogan was, wherever the sun rise, it, the land belong and the people belong to the king, uh, queen of England. Remember the Crusades and King Arthur and Ivanhoe and all that, Robin Hood and all that mess. 
They were the powerhouse. They were the United States back in the 1600s. That's why they had to move and send the people here to create a new plantation, which is now called the United States. All right. So they said, I'll read it again. You remain lost on the high seas, and until you show proof of life, you only have the rights that you are given. Now, that makes you a slave upon birth. And if I walk in the street right now and ask 100 people, do you know that you're a slave to the United States? If they don't beat me up, they'll call me a, 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 a they don't even They don't realize they're slaves. And the reason they don't realize it is because they were born in slavery. Everyone out there were born in slavery. Because all of this was set up, it started back in 1666, and as it came forward, People were, they were capturing people. They used the, the, the Pope. He was part of it also. They used the Pope's uh, discovery. What do they call that? Uh, uh, some type of discovery. Where anywhere you went, if they didn't believe in the Roman Catholic Catholicism, the Pope blessed you to kill them. The Pope, what, what do they call that discovery, uh, Bev? Do you recall? I, 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 I can't. Yeah. It's some type of discovery, and and believe it or not, that that particular bull they call those things when the Pope talks and sets up an executive order, they call them bulls. That bull is in place today, and when Clinton was in office and the Pope was riding that other Pope was riding around the world talking about he wants to forgive slavery, he wants to forgive this and forgive that. A couple of heavyweights in Africa say, don't come over here with that crap. Just revoke that discovery and we'll be all right. He never did do it. He never revoked the, uh, uh, the, the, the discovery. And what that discovery did, if you, were, if you were confronted by the blessed soldiers and crusaders, if you will, you uh, were asked to, to, to bow and or kiss the ring and or believe in Mary and Joseph, whatever, 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 and you refuse, they could kill you. And that's going on today. So we'll start again. You remain lost on the high seas, and until you show proof of life, you only have the rights that you are given. Once you prove life to the court, however, you are a king. Start here. What is Siskiyou Trust? Pronounce Sedeke. They, they pronounce it Sedeke. I do it just Q. And why should you care? In, in 1666 in London, during the Black Plague, the great fires of London Parliament uh, right. enacted. And, yes. Right. Yes. Was, it, was yes. it called the Doctrine of Discovery? Yes. 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 You must have got that uh, uh, in the chat room. I, I got away from the chat room. Yes, Beth, that's um, what it was called. I'm on the computer. The doc. All right. Uh, you want to read that? T read it. What did it say? It was. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, wait here. Go wait a minute. Uh, the, what you said, the Papa uh, Bull Enter. Uh, yes. This was in 1493. It played okay. a central okay. role in the Spanish conquerors of the New World, when the Spanish conquered okay. the New World. Yes, yes. What, anything else? Huh? For, for, was there any, did you, can you read anything else, or was that? Was that uh, it's a whole, uh, I'm trying to get to it, okay. but it's got that okay. won't let me get to it. Okay. Well, yes, it was in 1493. But it was used in, in uh, it's in place today. So that ought to tell you something. It's still in place today. And in 1660, the Queen of England used it because everywhere that London or England went, they, they owned and controlled with the blessing of the Pope. So they took all the property. That's what I'm trying to get to. That's where the birth certificate comes from. That's where the bar mitzvah. You ask a black, you ask any blackie of age, 
Does he know what a bar mitzvah is? And if he knows the word, he'll say yes. And you say, well, what is it? You'll have to get 10,000 different answers. And then most, the most recognized answer is, oh, that's when the, the, the child reaches his manhood. That's about less than point 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 zero 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 one percent of the answer. The answer is the 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 the, the, the air, they call him heir apparent. The heir apparent it graduates from the minority to the majority. He comes from eighteen and goes into nineteen. That makes him in the majority. But he has to prove, and I, that's what I'm trying to read to you. It says, in London during the Black Plague and, uh, and great fires of London been enacted, a, uh, enacted an act behind closed doors, called it Sessicube Act of 1666. Okay, the act being debated, the Sessicube Act was to... Subordin sub he say that word subordicate the rights of men and women, meaning all men and women were declared dead. They do that today. That's why they call it, that's why we catch hell, because they they declare all of us minors dead. And they don't care about you don't care yourself. You have no right talking about. I doubt it hurt one about. They know all of this. They, the Europeans, they taught this in their schools. We were not taught this, and that's what makes us a minority. We are ignorant individuals that are not aware of what's going on. That's all it is. You're just not aware. It's nothing to be ashamed of, but it's something that you should be concerned about because then you can understand why they treat us the way they treat us. And most of the, uh, let's call them wealthy, are prominent white people. The most prominent white people believe in United States. They will tell you right off the bat, I live in United States. What does that mean? They don't care about America. America is a plant. It only surpluses the queen and the president of the United States, who is the CEO of all corporations. So how are you going to argue about you, you got rights? You don't have any rights because you're still at sea, high sea. You're still dead. You still died in the plague, and the plague was ignorance. You're in, dar you're in darkness. Or as they would say in the good book, you're in the land of Nod. You don't know what the hell going on. You talk about football. You talk about rappers. You talk about all kinds of things that don't mean deadly squat. And then you want to argue about it. Then you throw in a, a little education. Here comes a bachelor or a master's degree. You really got a problem because they know more than you do, and they just as dumb as all get out. Then you bring in the PhD, the so-called black pundits that think they know everything. Thing. As a result, you're back in the cesspool of high sea ignorance and dead. Okay, let's continue. So, uh, so what you're saying, Ron, Ron, so what you're yeah. saying is that there is a difference between America and the United States. As, as different as day and night, America is known and is known as El Maroc. I am from America. I am an indigenous American. I don't belong to the United States. The hell with the United States. Those were Europeans that stopped that 13 colonies and were given 10-mile 10, 10 square to set up the seat of government. Now, put that in, put that in, in play. No, I am not a, a member or citizen of the United States. No, I am, I am a citizen of America. I am an indigenous one. I have been here all the time. 
99% of all Europeans, 99.9% of all Europeans came over here on the ship. Starting back in 1604 when they set up the Virginia plantation. The Virgin, they called they, it the Virginia colony. Go they ahead. said that they, they taught me in school that we came over here on the ship. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. They liked to. Ron? Did I lose you, Ron? Oh, Ron? We cannot hear you. Well, y'all, don't hang up. Just hold on. Uh, we've been disconnected with Ron March. Can you hear me? All right. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you well. All right. Now, I'm going to get you first one over again. All right. You have uh, too many questions. Okay, the first one was the title. You know, like, the first one was the title. The title was the title. The colonial title has nothing to do with the birth certificate. Okay. The colonial title deals with land. Land, okay. Yes. And you have to, uh, now you can, uh, what could you do with the birth No. Right now, if you could come up with a way to connect the birth certificate, no, you can't do it. Okay. I don't I don't know of any way of doing it. If okay. It. But the colonial title will hold your property in the land to keep them off of it, right? Okay. No, 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 no. It, it will not. Because okay. they do not want to recognize a birth of the colonial title. Okay. Now, if you pay cash and own the house, right. you can put a colonial title on the house. Okay. The most, now, the way that I would argue that point is when you sign your name, you pay for the house yes. because there is no cash. Okay. And, but they, they're going to try to tell you they don't know anything about that. They're going to go crazy. You know what I mean? So what you have to do is you can only put a rodeo title on what you own. Cars and stuff. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, so if, you, if you take it to court or take it through a process that you get ownership of, of the car or ownership of the house through through process, because right now there's a lot of ways to use a process to get your home if, if you've been in foreclosure because they are exposing all the, the fraud that's involved in it, and you may get lucky and win. And once you win, you can put that load of your title on. Okay. All right. Okay. So, I like when you talk about the Pope, you know, and all his evil deeds. Do you know they got the biggest telescope in the world? And yes. His name is Lucifer. Yes. 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 Okay. And yes. when I was saying, like, about Bush and why he couldn't land his plane in uh, Louisiana at that time because he didn't get any authorization from the emperor. Yes. Yes. That's what was told. That was the story. Plus, Bush got back at him because he wouldn't let uh, Cuba and Venezuela bring uh, hospital ships in to save the people. So he told him it's not your land, and, and that would be an act of war. Uh, All right, brother, I got to move on. Okay? Salam alaikum, brother. Salam alaikum, salam. Yes, call her, you're on the line. Hey, Ron, I just wanted to kind of confirm some things you said according to the receipt your birth certificate that I'm looking at. They're stating that the people are resources to the government, their birth certificates are security on the New York Stock Exchange. Yes. Yes. So yes. You know, I, was, I was going that's where I was going with my presentation. It okay. ends up on the stock exchange as preferred stock. Yes, exactly. All the I was just I was just calling to confirm what I'm reading versus what you're saying. And they're saying it's right here.
about the case. Okay. father who 
who has the great secret on how to open up the Sescue account. None of you out there have ever seen a broke Jew. Never. Never. And you never even question it. You come up with some old left-handed garbage, all Jews got money. No, they don't. They just as broke as you and I. But what they do have is organization. What they do have is a nationality. And what they do have is a religion that makes them stay tight because if any family gets out of order, they cut the money off. You'd act right if I if I was giving you money every week. If I put you on an allowance, all my children, I've got six. Six children, 40 grandchildren, and six or eight great-grandchildren. If I was rich and put them all, I could put them all on a an allowance a week. Send them all to college. Now, I can dictate, listen to me, I can dictate for them to act right. Catch one of them with his pants and cut off his allowance. I ain't got to tell him to say it twice. Cut it off. See, y'all look at us after reading, and I told you last week. Oh, no, maybe I didn't do it. I told you, I said it before. Y'all look at that Willie Lynch syndrome and think that's you. I'm telling you right now, brace yourself. A black boule, a no-good, dirty-heart boule wrote that in 1963. He said of those dates, 1712, Willie Lynch, the whole process of a mother getting of watching the daddy of get beat and all that he wrote that up. He made it up. He used a superb technique. The gentleman I met I, I haven't met him in person, but I met him on my program. His name is write this down. Nana Ashante. N A N A. Nana. Nana Ashante. That's his name. A-S-H-A-N-T-I, Ashante. Look it up. Don't, don't look at me like I'm out to lunch. You look it up. He made all that crap up. And when he and when he exposed it, he got so scared because he thought that the blacks were going to challenge white folks for doing it to him. But blacks began to challenge blacks for doing it. Just like you do today. We all got that Willie Lynch syndrome. No, we don't. I ain't got no tag on Willie Lynch syndrome. You may have it. I ain't got it. They don't dictate to me how I, who I am and where I come from. No. And everything that was written is a, I, I, I use examples. We're nothing more, as humans, we're nothing more than animals. And the less education we have, the more Animal, animalistic we become. It's just like tears. You ever ask yourself when you're on the highway why they keep putting them signs up, deer crossing? Is that sign for the deer not to cross or is it a sign for you not to cross? I bet you ain't even thought about it. You never ask the question, why do them deers keep coming that way? They've been trained for centuries and centuries and centuries, hundreds of years to travel that path. The whole family of deer, they travel it all the time. That's why they put the fence up. The deer tear the fence down because they got to get through. When that dumb bush put up that pipe, it was part of that pipeline up there in uh, Alaska. The pipeline was so big that it, it laid on the ground and the, the caribou couldn't get across. They went crazy. They couldn't get around it. Too long and too big. They made uh, I, I say Bush, they made that company come back and raise that pipeline off the ground so them careful would get through. Come on, we're, that's all we are. If you're trained that way, that's how you're going to act. They have a special program to train black folks. And every one of y'all fall in it because y'all come out of that Willie Lynch, the Willie Lynch Central think that that's you. My life has always been to defy the North. I don't give a dang I'm about the North. Take it upstairs somewhere. Okay. 
Now, we get that here to, I can run on this all day. I'm going to get this hookup right. So when I get cranked, I don't want to stop for no madness like this. And when we get off the air, I'm telling everybody, go to 718-506-1864. That's a call-in number. So listen to me. about tickets. You have to get your tickets online. Tickets will not be sold at the door. So again, this is very good information. If if you are um, not looking to be uh, calm or more or solvent or however, every, this is information you need to know anyway. So I'm going to see. Ron March, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes. We can hear you. Okay. All right. I I don't really know what the problem was, but I get a feedback. See, I can get the sound right here that I'm talking in into the into the box. So I do hear you. Yes. Okay, but you getting a feedback? Well, I'm mute. I'm really use using my telephone. I'm using my because, telephone. Okay, because we can hear you. Okay, hold on. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut my phone off and see if I can go back to the state to the radio. Okay. And so I got you it. are listening. You got it. Yep. Yes. Okay. I got it. Are you there? Yes. Can you we hear me? Hear we. Yes, we can. Yes. Yeah. I got it. I got it. All right. Uh, okay. What I'm through with the radio station, we'll finish this hour out, and uh, I'm going to come in early tomorrow and work with the engineers to figure out exactly what went wrong and how I can do better uh, than what I'm doing. Yeah, you, you know, you were doing real good. You were doing real good. Did you get a caller that called in or something? Yes, but the caller get... called in the station, yes. And now the station says that they cannot hear you, but they can hear me talking to you. And that's what I got to oh. figure out. How did I, yeah, what that's about. Yeah. So anyway, let's finish up, and uh, I'll get busy tomorrow. And by the time we get back next week, I'm sure I'll have answers to everything. All right? Okay. All them engineers up there, somebody should know how to figure it out. Oh, well, they, they got the heavyweights up here. Somebody should figure something out. You're right. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So now uh, I, uh, let me apologize real quick on uh, what happened, and then we're going to continue. Now, okay. most of the people that were on, I, we told them to go to 718. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they're over at 718, and uh, they can ask questions from that number. Now. Let's go Can back. You see your to, can you see your switchboard? Uh, yes, I can. Okay. I got uh, one caller. Let's take this caller. I got a caller from eight four three. Okay. Uh, last four is four eight five three. Yes, caller. Can you hear me? Eight four three. Area code eight four three four eight five three. Can you hear me? Hello? 
Can you stay out here with well, her? Yep, I hear him breathing, so we ain't gonna worry about it. All right. I think I know what the problem was, but I I'll, I'll know more. We got a lot of callers, okay. so let's get busy. All right. Okay. Now we're gonna go back and we're gonna stay with this Siskiyou Vi Act of sixteen sixty six. Okay. We talked about yeah. how they set it up. Wait a minute. Queen Before said, you go into it, Brian. Before you go into yes. it, what, what did that act mean? What did it? What, what, what was the? Uh, what was it for? It's the. It's the act that. Uh, the, it, first of all, it's the name of the trust, Siskiyou uh, Trust. Okay. That's what it's called. Now they pronounce it set a k, set a k, set a k. They get S C T hyphen A hyphen K A Y. So let's call it Seneca Trust. Now, what is a Seneca Trust? A Seneca Trust is a is a trust that's set up where they take everything you own and put it in a vault, and they will e uh, execute your trust. They will be the ex executors of your trust. Now they get around oh, that yeah. by saying. The United States uh, government, the oh. Commerce Department, uh, who else? Uh, that's it. Because they take your birth certificate and put it in the Sesake Trust. And they start making money off of it because they, they add a, uh, a, a monetary value to your birth certificate. And by 18 years, they say, that all birth certificates of persons born in America, notice how I say that, born in America, birth certificate is worth at least 80 to 95 million credit points. Remember that, credit points. So what does that mean? That means that you are rich as cream because you only spend in America, you can only spend credit points. There is no money, and you work in debt. Everybody's in debt because once they set up the SESQ account, they make you the debtor. So as you're born on your first day on earth, you are a debtor uh, uh, as high as uh, $40 trillion debt. Right now, I think it says around $25 trillion. You are a debtor as a baby. Had nothing to do with it. But since you were dead at sea, that's how they, they explain it. You were dead at sea. You don't have any rights. Only what we give you. And we're going to say that you are a debtor. You owe us $22 trillion. And there's nothing you can do about it. Because number one, one, you're a minor. Two, I told you they took the they took your mama and made her an infomat because they they threatened her with kidnap if she didn't turn the baby in to the Department of Vital Statistics. So everything they're doing is legal. Notice the word I use, legal, and it's by the color of law. They get away with it. Does that make sense? Yeah, once a person know the difference between legal and lawful. Well, I don't know how to say it other than legal is the game of fraud and and lawful is the game of righteousness. That's the only thing, the only way I can explain it. Okay. And, it, and once you get that through your noggin, you know, and then they take another step. That's what I'm going to tell you about now. The big, uh, the act be being dated set a K account. Uh, all men and women are declared dead, lost at sea, beyond the sea. Back then, operating in admiralty law, because they, because ships were the way of life back in 1600. The way an automobile is a way of, of travel today, ships were the way of travel then. They didn't have semi-trucks. 
They all use water. That's why you your is always want to go to uh, near water because they were trained that that's the only way that you could travel, and that was on water. So, and, and they got Detroit that sits on the river. All of that is by design. All right? So, during the Black Plague, let me go down and find my, my, my position. All men and women lost. All right? Back then, the state of London took custody of everybody and their property into a trust. They took everything you owned and put it in a trust, that Sesecu trust. The state became the trustee or the husband holding all titles. Remember that, holding all titles, property into a trust. Now that brother called in and asked me about the Lodial title. They, they, they shine away from Lodial title because that's the clear title of ownership. A Lodio title is a clear title of ownership. And they don't recognize it unless you have cleared your birth certificate because no one has a clear owner ownership of title. They always give you a certificate of title, something that looked like a title. You know, this thing is... is you know, you got to get your feet wet and start getting involved and start reading certain things, such as everybody was in foreclosure problems. You should have been reading some information on foreclosures. You should know something about foreclosures. And if you know anything about foreclosures, the first thing you will learn is the person that took your house did not have ownership of your house. But he had something called Secured interest in your house. Secured interest. What is that? Secured interest is what I just read when they locked, somebody locked up your title. Somebody locked up your title. And when they locked up the title, that gave them secured interest to your property. So they could fight you all day in court because the judge is a part of the uh, criminal activity. The lawyers are surely a part of the criminal activity. So what they do, they work together simultaneously and come up with acts or programs that take your property away from you. I don't need it. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? All right. Now, now explain to me, is that, is that complicated? I mean, I know it's a little, little complicated, but do you understand what I'm saying? The courts work against you. They look for reasons for you to fail. Never do they look for reasons for you to win. Never. And the law, the real law, is always on your side because since you're not a, 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 a legal attorney, the law says, and I find that law for you, the judge is supposed to help you get through the process of litigation. But what they do, they trick you and trap you so that you'll get trapped and then all of a sudden the other parties win and you become uh, the the loser of the game. It's, it's madness. But, it, but if you understand it, it's not madness because it's a simple progress of nothing but trickery. We have been trained to trust people. We have been trained through Christianity to trust Trained through Christianity to believe, trained through Christianity that whatever goes wrong, Jesus still loves you. And we've been trained to turn the other cheek. Trained to turn the other cheek, yes, yes. Uh, I like to use the uh, analogy of, of uh, uh, Mother Teresa. I hate Mother Teresa, and I'll say it once. And I'll say it again. I hate Mother Teresa. Why, Ron? Because she teaches you to love misery. She mm. teaches you how to live in the worst scum on earth and tell you that Jesus still loves you and that you're going to go to heaven and all of that kind of stuff. And then she'll live there with you for a while. You know, I, 
I don't blame her on a personal level. I blame her on a training level through that Christian doctrine where she tells hundreds of millions of people that Jesus and God is on their side and they're living like trash. And don't be angry. Don't, don't be upset. Just keep praying and things will come to you. To me, to that's me it's To me, it's like a form of hypnosis. Oh, yes, big time. That's a good analogy. Yes, it is, a form of hypnosis. And preachers are good at the same thing. They're good at the same thing. They teach you that as bad as you're living, someone living worse than you. So thank Jesus and thank God that you don't live as bad as somebody else. That's crazy. And, and it's almost like teach you to love... You can't put me in an outhouse. You know what an outhouse is. You can't put me yeah. in a house a outhouse and tell me that I'm living in the, a hotel, a one-story hotel. I'm not buying it. Yeah, I'm not going there. There's something wrong with this outhouse. It stinks and it's hot, and I don't want to be here. But you're going to tell me that you, you, you that's the best way, place to be. Don't be upset. Yeah. Don't be mad at the people that put you there. Because they're going to get theirs in the by and by, and you surely, God's waiting on you in the by and by to give you all the goodness that you need. That's the damnest thing I've ever heard in my life. And, 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 and the more I hear it here lately, the angrier I get, because you're going to teach me, rather than how to get out of bondage, you're going to teach me how to survive in bondage. That's the job of the Masons. The Boulets, the AKAs, the Jack Lake Preachers, you know, and the athletes, all of these so called uh, 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 wealthy black folks, they all have the same philosophy to teach you that if you keep your nose clean, work every day, believe in, believe in the, the Creator, believe in Jesus, not the Creator, believe in Jesus, that you'll sooner or later. Where I am. That's 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 crazy. You know what I'm saying? That's that's crazy, and that's what they do. Al Sharpton is a professional at it. You can call him up with a sound question if it has anything to do with freedom. By the time he gets through, it, you'll put the chains on yourself. If you listen to him, you'll put the chains on yourself and say, "Shut the door." And I, I want to be in slavery. Because I'm going to get mine over here. You can have yours over there. That's the damnedest thing i ever heard in my life. Woo! But, th but they do it. You know they do it. Okay. I'm still trying to work on it because I'm getting close to. Uh, let me get back in there. Okay. So the state of London took custody of everybody and their property into a trust. Put them in a trust. The state became the trustee, Forrest's nice husband, holding all titles to the people and property until a living man comes back to reclaim those titles and can also claim damages. Now, you, now notice how they word that. Once you educate yourself, and that's the key, once you educate yourself, you could come back and reclaim, excuse me, reclaim all of your property. A, a, a lady called up from Detroit. I don't know if you heard her, Bev. I don't think you did. She has oh. one of those black Bibles loaded oh, yeah, I heard with that. all the information. You, you yeah. heard her? Yeah. Loaded with all of the of the of the uh, of the goodies. And uh, I'm going to talk to her and get her set up because that. That book is worth, a, a, let's just say, millions of dollars because all of the titles are in that book. You know, so it took the, it takes the, right, the rule of the use of capital letters used in a name. That's where I'm trying to get to. When capital letters were used anywhere in a name, this always referred to a legal entity forward slash fictitious fiction, a company or corporation. 
exception. And again, John Doe. Go ahead. And again, you said, you know, I'm learning now how to listen to words. Again, you said legal, and I'm learning the difference between legal and lawful. And lawful. So, they very, yes, they very seldom use the word lawful. Because yeah, they all yeah. will go to jail. If they start using lawful, they all go to jail. They, are, they know what they We don't know and don't care. That's the part that hurts. It's one thing not to know, but not to care and then complain, calling up the stations, whining about downtown Detroit. Not only is that a waste of time, that shows your ignorance. That, you think the Europeans are going to give up downtown Detroit because you, you mad? After all he done, all the people he has murdered and killed, you know, and I'm sitting there now thinking, looking downtown, I'm thinking about black, uh, the uh, uh, Black Arts Theater, where the, the, the man that owned it, they killed him in order to the uh, six blocks of, of prime property, where they put a uh, cart town, a so-called Tiger Stadium, all of that, all of that was all criminal. They don't well, lose any but, sleep on it. But Ron, if you from what you from what you've been teaching us is that this is I mean, this is the same thing they did to America when they came over. So I mean this is not new. This is what they've been doing since they've been here. So didn't they do America the same way? Well well it, 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 once you train not to remember, once you train not to uh, logically look at situations, most people cannot relate to stealing the land from the Indians and stealing the uh, downtown from Detroit. They can't relate that as being the same thing. They'll look at you strange when you say that. Or they may even ask, why say that? What, is, what, is a, what does the Indian have to do with downtown Detroit? It's uh, easy. They took what he had, they Stole. It's like they took downtown Detroit. They stole it. And they did it so well that history is going to show that downtown Detroit was given to the white man because of that so-called uh, consent decree. And the only one left down there, I shouldn't say the only one, but I think the only one left down there that was a part of that uh, consent decree was that big head, uh, what they call him, uh, Surf, what, what did uh, they call him? Smurf. That big ass Smurf is down there. That daggum uh, Ken Cockrell Jr. All the rest of them are gone. All to better jobs and more money. Every now and then you see that chick pop up. That daggum uh, Sheila Cockrell, Sheila Murphy. That chick pops up. Where's she come from? Where's she been hiding? You see what I'm saying? So I don't think that most of us can relate. You're you're beginning to relate. You're beginning to see, but at one time you didn't see that, that far where you could hook up stuff. No, that, the European has not. He has not changed. He's been stealing ever since he got off the boat in 1604. And when you kick his butt and kill him and run him out of town, that punk will go out there, regroup, come back with Jesus and the nuns. And slip up on you, tell you you got the love, and and you caught you going to heaven. You change your religion and start believing in him, worshiping a a peck of wood that don't look like we don't people on earth that worships a deity that don't look like us, and will get upset if you bring it up. Oh, I know Jesus uh, wasn't white. No, you don't. Every time you see him, he's a peck of wood. What are you talking about? Blonde hair, blue eyes, and pale skin. Oh, we know he was in the. As though he was colored. Well, why do you keep hanging that pecker wood on the wall? Now you got a problem. See what I'm saying? It's all, it's all, it's all madness. So that's why I want to talk about it. I want to move and create a clean glass and sit it next to the dirty glass. We can build our own. We are money. We are currency. We are compensation by birth. That's one thing the Creator gave us in our melody. And that is how to create commerce. Did you know that, Biff? Yeah. That's I why know. they come. That's yep. That's why they come to the black community every time they used to come to 
when they used to come to America by uh, through the Ellis Island, the Polacks, the Polacks, the Germans, the Irish, you name them. Every one of them, as soon as they land, they went straight to the black community. Went in there with love. Before you know it, they were stealing or buying the city. I mean, yeah, buying their businesses. Taking the money home every night to the white community. Now we have people that are looking like us in color. The so-called Arab, the Arab. So-called uh, Egyptian, the so-called Syrian. They're all here. Chaldean, they're all here. Taking our money every night to Sterling Heights and Dearborn Heights. Nobody says a word. You know? And then if you bring up the Monroe Doctrine, I ask people about the Monroe Doctrine, they look at me like I'm crazy. They don't have no idea what the Monroe Doctrine was about. Well, then we I'll never explain heard to them. Well, and, and explain again, again what Monroe Doctrine in the short Monroe moment. Doctrine, well, let me, let, me, let me tell you what you don't know. The Monroe Doctrine was used by the Kennedys during the Missile Crisis of, of Cuba. Do you remember that? I remember that. You remember when? All right. He did it with the Monroe Doctrine. What did the Monroe Doctrine say? The Monroe Doctrine said in so many words that you, you could not come into this hemisphere. This is how they worded to you and us. I, I'll tell you what it really means in a minute. They said you cannot come into this hemisphere and set up any type of economic base to take back to your uh, native land. So they said the Russians were bringing missiles in so that they could be a part of the commerce of Cuba. And then they were going to take all of their earnings back to Cuba, I mean back to Russia. Well, of course, Cuba wasn't fighting it because Cuba was trying to set up an economic system where the United States had put the embargo up on their butt. Okay? Now, what the Monroe Doctrine really said was, because in the beginning, remember, there was a separation between United States and America. And they said, the Monroe Doctrine said, and this was from the president of, of Monroe that, was, that belonged to the United States. That's why they don't like to talk about this. He said that and passed a law that England could not come through the uh, uh, 13 colonies and go into America and set up an economic program and steal all the resources and take it back to England. Now, think about that. That's what they're doing to Detroit. And that's so, how they took that? America. Go ahead. Oh, you got a, a group of guys that came over here to America and set up this uh, this United States, these colonies. But they said yep. that the rest of the people that came behind them could not come through the colonies and go to America and set up any kind of shop and take the money back to England. That was that the purpose of the Monroe Doctrine, yes. But what they did, they made a joke out of it. They defied the, 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 the president. I, I don't know. I haven't read what went on in eight, uh, 1813, 1815 when the Monroe Doctrine was in place. But when you learn about it in school, in hindsight, they make it look like he was an idiot. He was a drunk, didn't have nothing else to do, so he did it. They made fun of him, made mockery of him. So nobody ever ever explored it and tried to figure out what the hell he was talking about. And yes, he told them they couldn't do that. They overpowered him. They said the hell with you. It was they, it was the so called thirteen colonies was not as strong then in 1815 and 1820 as it is today. See the for, the five hundred Fortune five hundred came from the thirteen colonies. It didn't come from America. That's, a, that's why every one of them belonged to the United States. That's why every one of them has to swear to uphold the United States Constitution because of the Monroe Doctrine and because of the Constitution. But do they live up to it? No. It's a mockery of justice. 
but they get around it because you don't know any better. You don't know how to sue them if they defy it. You don't know how to ask their oath of office. We're not, we, we wasn't trained on that process. You see what I'm saying? We don't know anything about that. So as a result, a, they just keep doing what they do. We have Go a caller, Ron. Okay. All uh, right. Area code 908 644. 908 644. Yes. Good evening, Sister um, Bev, Brother Ron. Good evening. Yes. Uh, Good evening. I have a, a question. Mm-hmm. Um, we we uh, have one point three, I believe it is trillion dollars that they say uh, goes between our hands uh, that leaves the community. Yes. And yes. my question to you is: Is it possible for us to? Um, transfer and open up accounts uh, online with black-owned banks where that $1.3 trillion uh, would go through the black banks. I, I'm just curious, um, would that, would that um, help to create an economy and would something like that work for us where we can um, uh, give the banks, the black-owned banks, that kind of power? What what effect would that have on us uh, as a race of people? All right. It would be a very powerful effect on us as a people. When I told you earlier in the show that if everyone sent $1, when I say everyone, let's take a number, 5,000 listeners, I know I got 5,000 listeners. If 5,000 listeners would send $1 to this station per week, we would have enough power to dictate to this station what we want to see and what we don't want to see. Because $5,000 a week, think about that. That's a lot of money. And, and the owners and, uh, and the corporations, owners of this business cannot tolerate losing that $5,000. That's what it's all about. Now, that trillion dollars that you're talking about, I would have to ask you, do you understand what it means to have that type of money leave the community? Do you know how it leaves the community? Take a guess. How does that, yes. they don't just take, how does it leave? We're 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 oh, yeah. spending money with other other races and we're giving it to them. Yes. Yes. All right. Stop right there. When we buy when you go into uh, uh, the suburbs, look at their liquor counter when you get ready to pay out. They don't have a large space for Johnny Walker Red, I can't name them all, Tangeray, all of those expensive whiskeys. They don't put that on the shelf because they don't spend that kind of money. You come down in the black community, we got to have Johnny Walker Red, Johnny Walker Black, we got to have Wild Turkey, all of that expensive stuff we got to have. Then you look at another thing that happens very strange. They start showing pants around their butt and hats turned backwards. You go to the gas station, you'll see that hat hanging up on the wall. Price of that hat will be anywhere from ten dollars to fifteen dollars. They don't hesitate to buy it because they've been trained by the television to look at it, and it's cool once you drop your pants down. So you're talking about a complete paradigm change of the black race in order to keep that money in the community, and we have to lead by example. And my argument last week was if the preachers, the preachers put approximately $5 billion in white banks Every Monday morning, five billion dollars yeah. in the bank. Every Monday morning. Now, if you yeah. can persuade those preachers to I, what? Give me a second. You, if you could persuade those preachers to take that money to a black bank, we could start and lead by example, so they could take that money and 
setting up programs that's going to uh, uh, create entrepreneurs. But you can't get them to do it because they, uh, there's reasons. All right, I'll just say it that way. There's reason that they don't do it because they like to be as be like to be called Mr. Smith is here today and have a cup of coffee, sit down in my office, Mr. Smith, all that old crazy crap, and and he's putting in that five billion dollars every Monday morning. Now, are you still there, young lady? Yes, sir. All right, go ahead, Bev. What did you have? Who regulates the bank? The United States government. Uh, comptrollers. It all comes through that so, FICD and all that. Yeah, all right. Go ahead. Okay. It wouldn't so, be. I mean. Her question so is a put, very so sound we, question. Yeah, so. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. If we put uh, money in the bank, I, I know the banks can only hold, what, 100000 or whatever they can hold. And the controller can come in and and shut that bank down or do, I mean, you're still putting it in their hands, right? Well, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. You, 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 you don't know that to be true. I don't know if that happened. No, I'm, ask, I'm, I'm not saying it won't. Question. I'm just asking okay. the question. I mean, well, we can't keep put, putting right. that stuff and then they come and, and play the okie doke on us. Okay, well, I would assume that the lady is asking, why don't we set up our own bank? Now, if you say that our own bank That's is going to be done uh, ran by FICD or whatever that is, you don't have to be ran no. by FICD. You and can run it with, without. Okay, okay. You can run a bank without it. And I'm sure, I hope she was saying that. When, I mean, I, I wasn't hoping she said but I thought she was saying that because she was concerned about I'm the sure money. The if we could. Okay, we could take that cash and put it in our own banks, but then if you don't have insurance on the bank, you can keep the federal government out of your bank. Now, I'll give you, let me give you a very good example. Do y'all, do you, both y'all remember DeLorean, DeLorean, when DeLorean made that, uh, that automobile with the doors going up, straight up in the air? He worked yeah. with General Motors and yeah. said, the hell with him, he going to build his own car? Okay. Yeah. DeLorean went out of business and went to jail because uh, the they found out that the movie stars, uh, Frank Sinatra and all them heavyweights, opened up their own bank in Las Vegas. And the federal government wanted to get in that bank, but they couldn't get in there because they did not have that FICA and all the stuff that I'm telling you about. Right. So what they did, they they set DeLorean up and set him up as a, with a drug deal that he had nothing to do with, and he needed some ready cash, and somebody told him if he went to Vegas, they could lend him that money. So he went to Vegas, set up a loan, got all legitimate, got the loan. Now the government's sitting back waiting. Once the loan was solidified, the government said, we're going to raid that bank because we're going to bring charges against DeLorean, and his money is in that bank, so we have a right to go in that bank. These are all white boys. This wasn't no blackies. These were millionaire white boys. They didn't go in the bank to get the loan. They went in the bank to see what they was doing and if they was hiding money from the federal government and the IRS. That's how crooked they are. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to do what you're asking, miss, we got to be smart enough to stay a step ahead of them crooks and be able to deal with it. Now, I say let's do it and use our straw man to do it. If I had the power to, to, to talk to somebody, I would counsel them to use our straw man, take it to the regular bank, put it in just like the white people put that in. Once you get that church money in there, $5 billion a week goes in there. Or let's say you just do one week, one week a month. All you're going to do is one week a month. You take the rest of it and do what you normally do. You're talking about a lot of money. Now. You want to set up an entrepreneurship where you're going to put black folks in business. They don't have a right to come in that bank and take your money or do anything to you because all everything you do is going to be on up and up. So, yes, it could work. Yes, we could pull that money down. Yes, we could take care of ourselves. But now you got to convince the preachers to sit down and negotiate what bank they're going to use and how much money they're going to put in each. 
week. And I guarantee you, you go, it's like talking to a bunch of buffalo. They ain't going to listen to you because they, they, they living too good and stealing too much money and don't want nobody to know what they got. And answer your question. We, got, we have another caller. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. We Wait, got a... Wait. Uh, Area code three one four seven six one three one four. Hey, peace and love to you, Mr. Beverly and Mr. Ron. Peace and love. Hey, now, how you doing? Uh, Say, how you doing? Oh, uh, I'll, see, I'll see you this weekend. Okay. Um. All right. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm hearing what I'm hearing what's going on now. When the guests come on, or anyone to talk about these issues dealing with business and your birth certificate authentication, all that. We got to make it clear. We cannot institute the corporations that kept us in dust about this. Christianity, Islam, Hebrewism, the triad religions or corporations that they are there on the corners as traditional postmen to keep your contracts of trust in place with the United States Corporation. So to try to work it out with them, I right. say, you know, put a circle up a bank is it's futile. That's not their that's okay. not their function. There there are there are they operate on the strictly colorful law. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. That's why they sign on the five oh one C three, which they don't have to. You see. Right. So yep. and uh, we have to look well, into more about the plan of how they go and use the manifest destiny also. I I will ask people to study yep. back on that so they can understand the movement and process of what they're continually doing. Yeah, I, I agree. Now, let's add this to the to the scenario. People like yourself that have that type of insight should be in on these meetings with these ministers so we can bring those points up to get around that type of foolishness that they're going to set us up and trap us to do. I'm sure it can work. We got too many. Many uh, blacks that do it for the Europeans, so I'm sure they could do it for us. So I'm agreeing with you 100. Oh, yeah, percent well, First of all, let me say well, that. Why? And I don't want to hold up too long. Uh, when we understand about the preachers, the preachers and the pastors, when once upon a time the Baptists, the Baptists were the rebellious uh, preachers who spoke against the uh, uh, slavery and all those things in the past. So they had, to, they knew they had to get to the uh, preachers. Because Nat Turner and all them, they dealt with occult science to deal with the, the astrology of the moon and knew how to prepare for war and things like that. So they knew that the preachers okay. was leading the people out on what they were dealing with, you see. So the preachers are important. Okay. So, yeah, so well, deal they are with important. the congregation. Deal with the congregation. I mean, uh, look at Garvey and them did it. They dealt with the people. Well... Correct. Then, then that was an assignment for you, Ben. I, I can agree, but it's it's it's, but, it's I mean, easier that's what, but than, No, no, because that's what we're doing now. We're doing media. We're dealing with the people. Okay. All right. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. But uh, but okay. I won't say nothing else. That's a positive input. Okay. But uh, yes. So, so let's go to the next caller. I I agree. I agree. All right. Now, I have a couple of callers myself, Beth. Okay, thank you, Let caller. me check out. I got, I got one from Detroit. Area code 313-6071. Do you have a question or comment? Area code 313-6071. Are you there? Huh. Nothing happening. I got another one from Detroit. Three one three eight one three four. Hey, how you Are doing? You there, Mark? Sir? Yes, sir, I'm here. You hear me? Can you hear me? All right. Yes, yes I can hear you. Yes, I can. Okay. Yes, I can. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? Live right. in right. color. All right. Good. I'd like to know about this new nation to the currency, how it would be exchanged. Would we use American dollars because they might tax us on the tenement back to England, or will we go back to the gold standard and silver and wait within making the currency our own where we don't have to turn it in to the mint or however? 
you know, like negative you to the goal. Yes. Number Back one, to negative to the gold and silver. There will be no gold and silver. The mm -hmm. currency that they're going to use will be another uh, 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 resource, such mm -hmm. as that Amero. Amero, and, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yes. Now, what they'll do is... Uh, uh, what they call it, they decline the uh, the um, uh, uh, monetary value. For yeah, example, like China. five dollars will be worth. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. It's like China, but see, and they want to hold back. Yep, and Puerto Rico. Yes, right. They all were part of it, mm -hmm. but they want to hold back so they can stay in power. They they're looking for a, a China to do that to devaluate. That's what they call it, devaluate the money. United right. States wants to be tough to act like they know more than everybody else. Right. So they they may they may wait too long, but I can tell you this: if you got a thousand a hundred thousand dollars in the bank, when they get through with it, you may end up with something like uh, mm -hmm. seventy five thousand. Uh huh. That's what they'll be do. You'll still because of the tax that they the take same. from it. Yes, and they're going to write off the uh, inflation. So mm -hmm. they write the inflation off on that hundred thousand and drop it down to seventy five, and you'll continuously use the same dollar. But the dollar won't be worth uh, what it was prior to the uh, uh, devaluation. I see that white folks are going back to the hills and going back to try to mine gold in these areas, which I think is indigenous areas to those Indians that were there first. I was wondering, is that lawful yeah. or unlawful? It's lawful because they are making deals with the Indians. Uh, the, most of the Indians are in bad shape, so they still want to make liens and leases on their properties so that they can eat, eat and, and, and do banks. Obama has been giving up uh, land back and money back to some of those tribes, which is all good, very good. But still, most of the Indians, as they, as they live on their reservations, are way below poverty. Mm. So if there's any been, gold out there, I'm, yep, go ahead. I've been seeing Obama wear his blue tie a lot. Oh, he yes. wearing the blue. Huh? <laughs> yeah, he wearing his blue tie yep, a lot. Yep. I was just wondering, like, yeah, okay, you still running with the corporation. And as um, far yes. as that is known, him and um, what's the what's the dude over in Israel, Netanyahu? He has his blue tie yes. too, so I'm wondering why they conflicting with each other on this uh, this Iran situation when they both a corporation and trying to get the money running anyway. Between it makes and good them. news, brother. Okay. It makes good news. That's why they do that. Because the okay. United States can cut Israel off overnight. Israel gets the largest uh, welfare check than anybody on earth from right the United on. States. Right. Okay. All right. That's what's okay. happening. Okay, right. thank you. Right, I don't brother. want to take up no more time. Y'all have a beautiful night. Thank you. You too. You All too. right, brother. Thank you. Brian. Yep. Yes. Explain to the, yes. to the people what that what the caller was talking about when he said the blue tie and the red tie. <laughs> so when they watch Obama and on TV, they know what they're looking at when he wear those different yeah. color ties. The tie in the European world, represents the feds. Just like back in the uh, uh, early days of the of the uh, 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 thirteen colonies, they wore those stovepipe hats, those little steeple hats. The pilgrims. We never asked that question. Why would they wear that ugly looking thing? They were known and recognized as those persons were masons. They knew of uh, the the inside track. They could use those hats as credentials that they could talk in certain languages and certain tempos and know what's happening. Today, I don't know year they changed, but today they use the tie. The European is allowed to use the tie. Now let me say to you right off the bat, the 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 the, the religion of the earth. I don't care who you are or what you say. Wait, I'll wait, stand Ron, by this wait too. Ron, Ron, we're getting ready yes, to go off yes, the air yes. in a couple of minutes. I want the people to know that they can call in to uh, 347-215-8041, or they can call in. What's your number, Ron? And they can hear us over the phone while you explain the time. Okay. What's your number? Okay, 
Oh, they can still call in on seven one eight number. Yeah, okay, seven one eight. Yep, seven one eight five zero six one eight six four. Seven, okay. and it must be calling in now because my lines is all taken up over here. Yeah, call in so you can hear the answer because we going and off the. Uh, yeah, and I got a minute and yes. twenty. I got a minute and some over here. Yep. So explain to, to us everybody. about. Explain right. about the red the day, tie and the blue. All right. I want to say that the religion of the earth, hear me clear, is Islam. The religion of the earth, the religion of the earth is Islam. Now, everybody going to say, oh, you crazy. All right. All of the secret orders, they graduate into Islam. That's why when you see a mason, he wears a fez. You ever thought about that? He wears the same hat that the Moors wear, a burgundy fez, and it has Islamic language on it. Okay? Now, the fez you're in the lower chambers or the lower part of the religions, such as Christianity, Catholicism, and all of that, and you are a or a Knight of Columbus, you're allowed to wear a, a tie to represent your secret order. And the tie has only two colors, red or blue. The blue represents corporations. The red or burgundy represents the republic. The republic. The true constitution. The true Islamic, uh, what is what was he? Uh, the emperor that signed papers of the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. They were Moors. They were uh, Islamic Moors. So the question, I mean, the the question, Bev, is the color blue represents corporations. They're lying through their teeth. You don't even have to listen to them when they got that blue tie on. But the red tie is when he's trying to solve a major problem. So when you see Netanyahu, that lying dog, and Obama arguing about something that's irrelevant, well, as I call it, because both of them has denied and, and, and betrayed Iran. Most of you out there don't know why Iran is so mad at the United States. They're mad because the same reason that Japan is mad at the United States. And they just, uh, uh, the date, uh, I can't think of the date, but it was like a month ago, Japan celebrated, fit, was it 50 years or 100 years? 1941. It had to be 75 years. 75 years of dropping the uh, atomic bombs, two of them, on Japan. United States is arguing about Iran and the atomic bomb, and nobody's ever used the atomic bomb but United States of America, Inc. The only crooks that's ever used it were United States of America. And they got more to say about everybody else having it because they know how devastating that bomb is. Netanyahu knows how devastating the bomb is. And they're afraid that... Iran will use it on them, and, I, and they probably will, because the United States has never apologized what they did to Iran, and never have they apologized, to my knowledge, of what they did to Japan. They have babies born today in Japan that are still suffering from the uh, radiation of those atomic bombs on Nagasaki and Iwo Shima over in Japan. The United States has more to more to. Uh, 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 not apologize. Get on their knees and pray for forgiveness. They've done more damage on the earth than the earth itself. United States look has at, done more damage. Look at what they Go did ahead, to uh, to Gaddafi and and uh, that other guy. Yes, how they went. You know, Hussein, Hussein, Obama, uh, yeah. Obama, Hussein, whatever his name was. Yep, right. yep. They killed all those people for no apparent reason. Because they wouldn't do what they say. They want to kill King Saad out of Syria. He's got so many guards, they can't 
can get to him. And they definitely want to get rid of the guy over in Iraq. I mean, not Iraq, but uh, Iran. They went in there and devastated that country back in 1953. Y'all don't even know about that. And after they devastated it, they put their own, the United States put their own government in. The Shah of Iran, the biggest devil ever lived on earth, the Shah of Iran. And the Shah of Iran was so evil that the United States let him set up hit squads to come to the United States because their people were trying to escape out of Iran to get to freedom. And he, and he would send hit squads over here and kill them. And the United States said nothing. The United States got a whole lot to feel bad about. That's so why I love to back. talk to one of them Europeans. So getting right, back to this red, tie, this red tie and this blue tie. So when Obama first was elect elected, he had red on, his wife had red on, his children had red on. So they were representing the Constitution. Yes, the Republic, yes. And, okay. and notice now, also that for the first time in your life, you may, you may have seen the inauguration, Bev, and I'm guessing, because I can't count them either. Let's say five presidents in your lifetime. Yeah. I, I could go back to Eisenhower, and I want to that's it, Eisenhower. And I didn't see the inauguration, but I know he was inaugurated. I was too young to really know about it. That was in the early 50s. He was in there. Now, why do I say that? He was in there because I done lost my train of thought. Uh, you you were talking about, I think you were going with Obama being inaugurated two times or something. Was yes, 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 were? yes. Never, that's where I was going. Never have you ever seen one president in one election inaugurated twice. Obama was the first to be inaugurated twice. They got him on a Tuesday regular day, and they came back Wednesday morning and did it again. Now, y'all should know, y'all saw it, didn't know what the hell you're looking at. That's why I say we're so ignorant and so trained and so brainwashed, we look at stuff and don't even know what we're looking at and don't care what it is. What do I care? It ain't about me. I don't care nothing about it. And it's all about you. Right. Because the day the first day he, he inaugurated, he had to free you. If he'd have stayed a republic president, he would have had to free you and give you all of your money back. He, you would have been uh, the uh, Cisco account. He would have had to open up all of the Cisco accounts. But he came back the second day and closed every one of them because he did it. He was uh -huh. inaugurated by the corporations, and the corporations told him he couldn't do that. Yeah. And when now, he was elected the put, second time around, Ron, he had blue on. Yes, he did. And he didn't even use a Bible. They said they couldn't find a Bible. Yeah. Ain't that something? Yeah. We look right at it. I had pictures of it. I might be able to find it. If anybody doubt me, I'm so mad, I wouldn't even show it to them if, if they did doubt me. If they did doubt me. I don't care. They don't care, so I don't care. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, but that's your answer, Biff. They yeah. have a right. Now, now, if you go to Alexandria, Virginia, if anyone ever gets a chance to go there, you need to go to, uh, I want to say Dwight D. Eisenhower, but it's not Dwight. It is Dwight. I think it is. Dwight D. Eisenhower has a library there known as the George Washington Library, I think they call it. Every president Listen to me carefully. Every president, all the way back to George Washington, has a fa a real fez, a real fez in that museum with their name on it. It's in the Alexander Alexandria uh, uh, Library of I don't know what the full name is, but it's the museum of the presidents. It's in Alexandria, Virginia. Every president has a feds. And I think the only one in there with the feds that was not a president was Benjamin Banneker. 
whose name was really, whew, he has an Islamic <laughs> name. I can't, I can't, I, it ain't come to me. So my brain, I ain't that smart no more. I can't remember stuff like that. But he, he was a, he had an Islamic name, and he was in there because he was the founder of Washington, D.C. He built Washington, D.C. And how many know the first capital of the United States was in Philadelphia? It wasn't in Washington, D.C. It's, it's, it's all of the just madness. That's why I say we don't have time to worry about a city that's already been taken by the Europeans, been already been invaded by the Europeans. Yeah. What we need to do is stay away from down there. We need our own economic system once again. And we don't need them to build it as that as that racist supremacist Nolan Finley has been bragging about. We don't need him to do that. We can do it ourselves. I'm so tired of seeing these Europeans and Mexicans doing all of this construction work all over Detroit. I don't know what to do. Where is the city council? Where is they don't the so-called... Ron, they don't they don't work for uh, you, they work for the corporation. But you gotta remember they were sworn in to you have a right to challenge them. You have a right to challenge their oath. And when you challenge their oath, the oath says that they were work for the people. Now you can sue them in court as a plaintiff, you can sue them because they're not working in the best constituents of Detroit. So don't say that like that. If, when so you say that, that means you're going along with the color of law. So you saying no. that the city council do not work for the corporation, the the city of Detroit? You're trying to load. This. I can argue to you that yes, they do not work for the uh, corporations. They're sworn in by oath. Put your right hand up, hold your heart with the left hand. I swear to uphold the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of Michigan, and the Charter of Michigan. That says you're going to be uh, uh, ran by the corporation. Now, they're working outside of the Constitution and creating fraud when they do this dirty work for the corporation. But you can sue them for that. You get okay. Yes. I got it. So when you load it up the way you, when you load it up the way you did, I have to be careful to answer it. And since you asked me twice, I'm gonna answer it. No, they don't work for the corporation. It's against the law to work for the corporation. But do okay. they do they do it? Yes, they do it. Why do they do it? Because you don't do anything about it. That's why okay. you don't do anything about it. That's what the problem is. That's why we need to be at, a, at the seminar to, to learn the state constitution. You can read it right in the state constitution. The purpose of all elected officials is to protect the citizens, not corporations. So they do it out of fear. They do it out of money, a payoff, or they do it out of like stupid. Take your choice. Either way, you lose. But you can sue every one of them. You can recall them for that, not doing what is good for the city. We should have been recalling them for signing that uh, uh, consent decree. But could you find anybody? All pun knew all the answers. All them were Uncle Remus Negroes. They knew all the answers. We don't need to sue them. We'll do this. We'll do that. Yeah? And look at us now. All they do every day, drink coffee, read the paper, and sign memos that were sent to them by the governor, I mean by the city. And all he wants is approval, so the records would show that blackies gave the city away. We didn't invade it. They're going to tell your children. Detroit is so beautiful because black people knew enough to elect a mayor that, had, that loved the city. That's the thing I heard. The man love money. That's why they down there, stealing every dime he can steal. 
And now I notice every law, every fund that's ever been set up, not only for the city of Detroit, but the state of Michigan, by the federal government, they use that money. But that is, figure that one out. They're going to use that, that money again. right that now. They do what? Every, every, every fund that's been set up by, for example, after the 67 riots, the, the, the uh, Commerce Department sent $8 million into Detroit to re, re, refurbish the city after the burning and looting. Coleman Young saw fit to give that to the Arabs who took that and bought the businesses of the city, bought out all the black folks. Today, there were numerous of laws. All of the bankruptcies prior to, there was money set up to save Detroit. The whole of the, of the, of the um, what do they call that thing? It, what it is, it's the, it's the lawsuit against the, 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 the banks on the foreclosures. There were trillions of dollars sent to Detroit on the Detroit had one of the biggest foreclosure operations in the state in the United States. There were goo gobs of money sit here, sent here by the government, earmarked, not not just Detroit, but earmarked to save people's houses. But do the governor, the banks, the lawyers and all of the other state fit since they wanted the city to hold on to the money. They held on to it. Didn't do anything. Because you remember when they was when they was doing work on uh what's that project over on Joy Road and South Philly Expressway? Herman. You remember that? You remember uh -huh. Archer was given a lot of, Archer was given a lot of money by the federal government to tear it down fix the dirt because the dirt was contaminated. He saw fit to let it sit, and the government came and took the money back. Mm -hmm. That was part of the demise of Detroit. All of that was a part of the demise of Detroit. That started the downfall of Detroit. There's always been money sit in here to, to better the city and the living of Detroit. But the powers to be from the governor all the way down to the on a local level, was in a scheme this is, not to release the money. And this is not only what? happening in Detroit. I want people to understand this is happening in other black cities. Well, most of the cities yes. were black. So it is, it is yes. across the board. Yeah. Yes. 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 Well, but well, now, well, since the mayor is white and they have control of the water, and all of the corporations, and they stole all the treasures of Detroit. Now they're going to use the money to make it better for the Europeans. Yeah. Think about that. And the Negroes going to sit back and say, I knew we needed a white mayor. Yeah, put the black in there. He couldn't do a damn thing. See what I'm saying? If I'd have been in there, I'd have been in the news every day telling it. I tell, I tell it. They holding the money back. They want to give it to us. They race. That's what, that's what Coleman told them. Y'all racist. You wouldn't give me the money. But now calling them a racist is not politically correct. So since you want to be a good Negro, you won't say that they racist. I'm gonna call them a racist as long as they live. All right, I go, man. I have a few calls. Right. But I don't think they want to talk. I open up every line that I have, and uh, okay. they didn't say nothing, you know. All right. So. Well, Brian, you got to tell, well, the people this Friday, come on out and uh, to the seminar. Oh, oh yes. Yes, and the seminar yes. The meet and greet. Now, yeah, go ahead. The, the, meet, the meet and greet is on Friday. I will notify everyone that has a ticket where it is, what time is going to be, how to get there, and we want you to show up. It will not be at 18846 Seven Mile. It will not be there.
going to be in Southfield. I'll say that much. It's going to be in Southfield. We already got the place. It's already set up. They're waiting on us to come in. I did that so that the $50 ticket would not be trying to crash the $100 ticket. So if anybody's mad, be mad at me. That was my idea. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Right. All right. So, okay, so. until next week, man.